Hello, and welcome to On Point. I'm Sammy Shakta. CSUN has the largest student population of all 23 Cal State universities, with almost 40,000 students at the beginning of last fall semester. 3,500 students currently live in student housing. That accounts for roughly 9% of all CSUN students. Many students say, in general, life in the dorms is a positive experience, and most say part of that experience is the advice and support they get. Each floor of the 20 buildings at the dorms has a residential advisor, or RA. RAs manage elements of residential life, like accommodating new move-ins and decorating their floors in certain themes. Many of them also remain on duty all night, which means they could be awoken at any time to unlock doors or resolve conflicts. They're also trained to assist with student anxiety and potential campus threats, among other sensitive issues. CSUN has RAs on duty 365 days a year. That means they're required to work on holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas. OnPoint has discovered that CSUN's RAs are no longer being given a paycheck for their work. Current and former RAs say their payment of $265 a month was taken away last August. They still do receive a stipend package, which includes free housing and a free card for meals on campus. Since last August, the meal card has been upped from 7 to 10 and now 14 swipes a week. Some of these RAs say they're not pleased with the current compensation. We also asked some dorm residents if they think their RAs should be paid. Honestly, they do do a lot. I think they should get paid at, like some kind of stipend. Like they do do a lot for all of their residents. I know my RA, she's really good and she's great. She makes she makes it like home. I believe that they should get paid, including with the housing. Our RA, Taylor, he does so much work for us. He's always there for us when we need him. Sometimes he gets calls at like 6 a.m., like telling them to unlock the door or something from outside. And he doesn't even get any like payment for it, which is kind of unfair. Just because the amount of hours that they put in, it doesn't match up with what they're getting, just a room and maybe like a couple meals at like the cafeteria. Uh, RAs usually work like 20 plus hours a week, and that's not including like the meetings they have to attend, the paperwork they have to do. I think that the work that RAs do is very important. Um, the compensation is enough, but I think it's just barely enough. Oh, I honestly don't think it's fair with the amount of work, time, and not only the amount of work and time involved, but also the time that they have to do it. They're in college, they're here to study, they're not here to be an RA, they're here to get their education. So by doing it at the same time, I think they should be compensated more. The question is, why did CSUN stop paying its RAs when some CSUs still are? Coordinator for Residential Student Success, John Rodriguez, declined an on-camera interview, but said that the changes came as a result of an executive order from the Chancellor's office. Universities can choose whether they want to pay RAs in kind, meaning they would get non-monetary forms of compensation like free housing, free meals, or free parking. Or they can change the job classification from RA to student assistant, which means that they could still be paid for their work. One RA said the number of applicants for the job has dropped by half since last semester, in large part because of these changes. On Point's Daniel Martindale has more on the story. Thanks a lot, Sammy, and welcome to On Point. I'm Daniel Martindale. Joining us today are our guests, Al Wayne Spencer, a former residential advisor at CSUN Housing, and Melissa Giles, the current associate director for residential life at CSUN Housing. Welcome in, guys. Thanks, Daniel. Um, I want to start off with you, Melissa, just asking, just to give an overview of what housing's like, uh, the dynamics there, just give us kind of a general rundown of uh, the situation there. Um, I think it's a pretty vibrant, college-centered place. I've been here for 15 and a half years, and it's definitely changed over, over time, especially since we added the new 24-hour um, community center and our learning center. Um, that really has kind of become a hub of student housing. So it's, it's, it has a real true college feel and um, a really uh, engaging place. And Al Wayne, can you talk about from a student perspective, just the student experience at, at housing? Uh, so my student experience in housing was really, really good, actually. Um, I definitely enjoyed the, uh, the atmosphere. Um, a lot of people were getting to know each other. Um, I got to meet a lot of, you know, friends um, who were like, you know, long-lasting friendships um, that I think can last throughout life. Um, I definitely think that it was a great place uh, for uh, students to get acclimated with um, the college um, campus and just the life of CSUN. Um, is there any kind of specific feedback, Melissa, that you've been getting lately, um, just in general about housing from students? Is there any kind of comments that have been sticking out to you or 
Yeah, um, the wireless has been spotty in places, and so we've we've it, it's yeah it's an ongoing thing. So we purchased new um, access points and are constantly installing those. Um, the University Village apartments, where our um, students with families live, um, has never had their own internet service. They've had to purchase their own, and so um, we're just now laying wires to be able to provide the same internet access over there that we. Um, have over here and then lighting is a concern to students and so we're going to do in, in, in the nighttime um, and trying to think um, oh the um, outdoor sports facilities basketball court volleyball court they need some uh, redoing and so we get most of our feedback through the residence halls association which is our student government for housing and they collect a lot of feedback and bring that forward to us um, another thing we want to bring up today, it's on everyone's mind with all the recent tragedies, most recently in Florida, is campus safety, especially in the dorms. Um, just in the same week as the Florida shooting, there was a threat of a gun on campus here, um, something that's on everyone's mind. So one thing I want to ask is, just for you all, Wayne, in your experience there in your time, are the dorms safe? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, the mm -hmm. dorms are safe. I think that uh, CSUN does a really uh, great job or exceptional job of making sure the students are safe. Um, so for instance, when uh, events like that occur, um, they do respond in, a, in a, you know, a considerate amount of time where students are aware of what's going on um, and that they know where to go. So like RAs, um, for instance, uh, are able to you know, act accordingly um, and respond accordingly. So I think they do a good job of that. And Melissa, for you, it kind of goes off of that, but are there any specific precautions that you've taken in the wake of these uh, tragedies? Are you taking any kind of extra security measures or something like that? Not specifically. We take all of our cues from the Department of Police Services. Housing and uh, DPS meet once a month to discuss all kinds of things, and so we always follow their lead in terms of any enhanced security. We just put in... Um, uh, the the closed circuit cameras this past summer, but that's all driven by the chief of police and her team because um, she's the expert on emergency preparedness, that kind of thing. Now, at housing, are there any kind of mental counseling services available in case someone is going through a, a rough situation? Yes. Um, during regular business hours, of course, a student can go to the University Counseling Services, but we also have uh, a residential life liaison from University Counseling Services, and she's um, at our offices Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, and um, in the evenings, the RAs are on call, and the community director, there's always a community director on call in case somebody should experience a crisis. They will respond and then uh, call in police services and the paramedics to do assessments if, in case we have to hospitalize somebody. Uh, Alwyn was... How to deal with a mental situation or a potential threat, was that part of your training to be an RA? Yes, it was. Um, so that looked like uh, making sure that they got the necessary resources um, according to whatever situation they were in. Um, and also making sure that we're not like the counselor per se, um, but making sure that they are led to the correct um, facilities, the correct resources so that they can get their aid. Mm -hmm. And being a former RA, can you just describe in general to our audience just the kind of work um, on a daily basis that RAs do, maybe a day in the life of an RA? Could you kind of give us a... <laughs> yeah, I could definitely do that. Um, so that looks like uh, crisis management, um, conflict resolution, um, budgeting for events, um, financial uh, managing, uh, making sure that you're building community, so um, putting on programs on your floors, um, also in the programs, making sure that you're documenting um, incidents, um, and information and just making sure that things are communicated um, effectively. And um, for both of you, how many RAs are there in total working right now currently? There are 73 RAs and then 21 academic mentors who are not RAs but serve in a similar capacity but they're solely focused on academics, retention, student success. So coming off the heels of that, there's something that we've sort of uncovered lately in, in talking to people at the dorms in our investigation. Um, RA compensation is the next thing we'd like to bring up. Um, we spoke to several RAs who say they're no longer being paid, and they said this started at the beginning of the semester. So as of last August, um, Al Wayne, can you just confirm that this is true? Sure, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's actually interesting um, that this happened uh, because I remember, um, I think it was two semesters ago, or a semester ago rather, um, there was a meeting had after uh, the semester asking what can uh, be done to make sure the RAs um, and the environment of housing is better for RAs. Um, and I spoke up and I said, you know, it would be, it would be great if we had a raise mm -hmm. um, and at least like maybe $450 if everyone on um, student staff is getting paid. Um, at that time, 
uh, resident advisors who lived in um, the, uh, the suites did not get compensation, um, but they were getting a meal plan. Um, and so I did um, talk about my research and um, the amount of money that housing makes, um, respectively around $13.8 million a month um, on um, residents who, get, who are um, paying for, um, for housing every month. Um, and I said that, you know, if we all get a raise, whatever, and we all get um, paid such and such amount, it wouldn't put a dent in housing's budget. Um, and that conversation was recorded and sent to the CSU chancellor. And um, at that time, um, transitioning into the next semester in the summer, um, I had resigned because of that. Um, and so um, I also received an email stating that um, RAs are no longer getting or required to be paid. Um, but rather they're getting 400 um, dining dollars and 10 meals a week. And um, to me, I thought that was um, quite, you know, disrespectful. Um, but also I think that it was, it caught everybody by surprise, um, only because that wasn't what um, RAs had initially signed up for. Um, and it was an unfortunate situation for um, quite a few RAs, um, but um, I just think that it could have been better handled. Um, yeah. Thank you. And Melissa, can you tell us, in lieu of getting a payment, what kind of compensation that RAs currently receive? Um, they receive a meal plan and room. <clears throat> the meal plan, while Wayne is right, was $290 and 10 meals. We did hear from a lot of RAs in the first semester that that wasn't uh, enough for them to eat, and so we added an additional. Now it's 14 meals, $290, um, and we have budgeted for that type of meal plan moving forward. Okay, and our uh, news team, we actually went over to the dorms and spoke to several current RAs, and uh, they told us the same thing, kind of that Wayne said, that they found out sort of shortly before school started that the payment was being taken away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those people actually didn't want to be on camera. They didn't want to be shown on their interviews. And um, we're going to go ahead and play those reactions just to show you guys and get your, uh, your comments on them. So can we take a look at that? I was already packed and ready. So like by the time I found out, it was like, all right, like I still have to do it because it's like how I'm going to live and go to campus because I live like two hours away, so it's not close at all. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting just because like on our first day of training, they did mention the stipend loss and they did say specifically that, specifically that like all CSUs remove their stipends from their RAs, but it's obvious that it's not. They said you could go online and Google the chancellor's like official statement on it on like why they removed it, but when we asked for them to email it to us, they said they would and we never got that email, so. I think that we did deserve a stipend and that it wasn't clear why we got it taken away. It seemed like it was at the last minute. There was one session where we were able to ask questions that were supposed to be answered clearly for us and nothing was really answered. I do think it's interesting because housing is supposedly impacted right now, which means it's at full capacity mm -hmm. and that our stipends are taken away at the same time doesn't make sense to me. I think that that is an issue. I think that because of the fact that CSUN is the biggest CSU school with the biggest housing community, I do think that um, the RE should be, you know, compensated a little more than what we are now. So, El Wayne, after seeing that, do you share some of those same feelings? Absolutely. Um, I think also with the work that we put in, um, and that's not including uh, a thing called duty. So duty is like when we do like night security um, and things like that. Um, when we fact, well, I did my research and I did my mathematics and whatever, and the amount of hours that we get um, to put in um, just for duty alone, that's not including programming and other uh, duties assigned um, while on the job. Um, and the amount of money that we're getting a month, which is $221.67, with a $3.33 tax deduction, um, it wasn't, um, it didn't add up, you know, to me. Um, and so, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't, it doesn't add up to um, a lot of RAs who share the same sentiment. Um, and so I, I believe that, you know, taking the siphon away, it's, there are some p certain people who were um, definitely um, appreciative of that and um, kind of in a, in a way depending um, on that because that was like one source of income. Um, and so I believe that that was um, something that was really like, whoa, you know, wow, housing. Really. Uh, Melissa, I'd like to give you an opportunity to comment on that clip as well. Yeah, um, actually, the the way that this uh, rolled out was um, the chancellor's office sent a memo to HR departments, I believe, in June. Um, that you'd have to get a hold of the memo to to look at that, and it did ask all CSU housing departments to 
compensate residential student leaders, RAs, mentors, with only in-kind compensation. And so they removed the RA classification from the classification standards of the CSU, rendering us unable to use that classification anymore. Um, we um, took a lot of consideration into how to compensate, and Alwain's right too, the, the RAs and apartments got the room and stipend, RAs in the suites because they don't have kitchens got um, room and, and meal plan. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we threw around a bunch of things, one of them being uh, paying for parking for RAs and mentors, but that wouldn't really be fair because some RAs and mentors don't have cars. And so the cleanest and most, I think, humane thing we arrived at is that at least we'll give them, feed them, because um, 225 wasn't a lot to be able to eat off of, um, and make that the same across the board as it had been just for the RAs and the mentors. And the so suites. are you saying that the CSU totally took away all funding for RA payments? Not funding. No, not funding. They took away the classification, the, okay. the classification at, in RA. Now, some of the CSUs were already only compensating RAs with in-kind compensation. Some were doing like we were and using the RA classification. Um, it just kind of depended on the campus. But mm -hmm. anybody who was using the RA classification, they, took, they removed it. Yeah, we were. So it wasn't about funding. Right. We were possibly under the impression that all 23 CSUs had taken away the payments. So we went ahead and called the chancellor's office. If we could go ahead and uh, take a listen to clip number two, just to uh, get some clarification. That's actually not quite the case because, um, I mean, in basically RAs receive in-kind compensation. So that means that they either have like their room and housing board uh, covered or meal plans or parking. Um, so exactly how they're compensated is determined by each individual campus, but they are compensated with in-kind compensation. In addition, if they perform duties that must be paid as, as an employee, like um, if they're working at the front desk or something of the residence hall, then they need to be appointed to a student assistant classification so they can be compensated through the state payroll system. Again, that decision is made by the campus, not, not by our office. So around the time when this was going on, did you have any direct communication from the chancellor's office and saying what They would be communicated with HR, who then okay. communicated with us. Mm -hmm. um, and but what you said is true. It, it, it was we were told in kind compensation, but each housing department could decide for uh, for their own what that was going to be. In kind means you can't be paid, you can't be on payroll unless it's for things that are outside of the RA or mentor role. Um, so, um, and going back to the first clip, Alwyn, why do you think some of the RAs didn't want, or most of the RAs didn't want to be on camera? Um, because I feel like a, a lot of them probably felt as if they were going to lose their job mm -hmm. for speaking up. And I think it's very important as student leaders um, that we know that we, you know, we have a voice. You know what I mean? And um, and um, I just feel like yeah, that's probably one of the reasons because um, the fear of losing their job. Uh, Melissa, what do you think? Um, I I wouldn't know without talking to them, but um, that makes me sad to hear that people would think they would lose their job for speaking up because I like to think of us as trying to listen as much as possible and do what we can with with student feedback. And so, um, going back to around the time the payment was taken away, did the housing office communicate any of this information to you about saying that you'd no longer be paid a, a paycheck? Um, they did, but it wasn't in a timely fashion um, in the sense that we had enough time to plan accordingly. It was really um, short um, notice, basically. And uh, a question that rose up in my mind is, um, at what point um, were we, like, as, as, as student housing, um, did we have the choice to comply or not? Um, given that this was maybe like a, a executive order or some sort, um, did we have the choice to comply or not? And if so, what were the options? Um, and I feel as if, if certain things were taken away, we do have um, things in place where we can actually amend certain things, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. That actually leads perfectly to my next question for you, Melissa. Um, did, this, did CSUN themselves try to protest this order or resist it in any way to protect the payment of the RAs? Again, question for HR. I don't believe so and because it, by taking away the resident advisor classification and not having it available at all, there were just, just was no way to pay the RAs anymore. Um, and um, yeah, so I don't think there was any way. Would that be the case for other CSUs also? It, it, was, it was taken away from all the CSUs. So we called Humboldt State and San Diego State to get their comments to see if they still pay their RAs, so let's uh, take a listen to that also. Oh, this is, this is Housing and Residence Life. I'm looking here now. 
Let's see if I can find any specifics for you. They will be. They will have a stipend. They do have a stipend. Yes. RAs get free housing, and they get a free meal plan, which is like the Flex Seven, and um, they can work the front desk and make money through that. So you can pick up hours because you're required to work as an RA three hours at the front desk, but you're able to pick up some more shifts. So, Melissa, why do you think these schools still pay their RAs as student assistants, but not CSUN? Um, that is an option to pay as student assistants, but we were told in the memo very specifically we couldn't pay for RA responsibilities. So, working front. Is desk, there a way to just right. reappropriate RAs as student assistants <clears throat> so you can still pay them? No. No? no okay. Not currently. But um, interestingly, um, I can't speak for other campuses and what their HR departments uh, have advised, but we go with what our HR tells us um, in terms of interpretation of the memo, that kind of thing. So, and I can't, I can't speak to other campuses. And Al Wayne, when you were at housing, um, have, did you see the quality of the RA's work go down, perhaps, once they found out they weren't getting paid anymore? Were they? Absolutely. Um, I think that because uh, we felt as if it's kind of like, okay, are just the pay is getting um, taken away, um, but also the, the quality of housing um, in a sense of the workplace, it kind of really shifted um, in a place where um, it felt as if nobody really cared. Um, and um, I say that because um, cer certain people wouldn't show up for duty, um, certain people wouldn't take their responsibilities seriously, um, only because um, some RAs who I spoke with um, said that, well, if housing decides that they're going to just not pay us um, and then communicate that in a very short notice, why do, why do I even bother, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And for both of you how, you, how do you think that might affect the students living in the dorms, knowing their RAs might not be as, um, you know, up to the task? Uh, it, it definitely could. Morale in any kind of workplace can definitely affect the, ser the service mm -hmm. to the students and, and that kind of thing. And we tried really very hard to listen to all the concerns, um, concerned about um, the compensation, um, the fact that the meals were not enough for people, and we tried to respond to that as best as we could. And I had a lot of individual meetings, so did my assistant director, Jessica Fred. We had a, a place for people to come and talk and debrief, um, and I feel like we did the best we could. But yes, when, it, when something, you're, you're being told you're going to get something, and all Wayne's right, I think uh, you all accepted your jobs in March. Um, and you're told you're going to get April. one kind of compensation, and then it changes all of a sudden. That of course is going to affect morale. Um, when did you and the housing office find out this was happening? I believe that memo came in June. In June, and then when were you told that they were taking the payment was being taken away? Um, so that email got forwarded to me by another RA. Okay. Uh, at the at the time I had resigned, so um, I was no longer on payroll. But then that email got sent to me in around July. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and then just. One sort of final question for both of you is, do you think, you know, plain and simple, that RAs deserve to get paid money for the work that they do? I would say absolutely, um, because we, we are dealing with lives, we're dealing with, uh, we, do, we do a lot of, a, a little bit of everything. So, um, it, again, crisis management, um, report writing, we do a lot of things um, that a lot of people, a lot of, of um, older adults uh, may not necessarily do at one time. Um, so we juggle a lot. We juggle um, a lot of residents, about 54 students uh, maybe on, on a floor, um, average probably 33. Um, and so I feel like, you know, we do a lot of work. And so I, I believe that that's worthy enough to get paid. Melissa, I want to let you respond to that. I don't think that, like, my personal opinion of that is really relevant. Um, I, but I, we do extremely value the work that the RAs do and, um, mm. and in as much as possible we want to try to compensate for the work they're actually doing which is why we tried to um, make the meal plan a little more substantial that sort of thing um, and it, it's a very valuable job it's a valuable experience for those who have it um, it, it contributes to the main reason why living on campus is different than living off campus, um, because you have somebody you can go to, talk to, there's people to manage crisis, that kind of thing. So we really do value what they do, but my opinion on whether they should be paid or not is not really relevant, because we can't do that. And just one final thing, is there any option that in the future that CSUN could seek an alternative 
funding source to maybe get payment back for Remember, that. it's not about funding. Okay. We, we had the funding. In fact, the meal plans cost us more than the 225 a month stipend, mm -hmm. and so we had to rearrange some stuff in our budget this year. Mm -hmm. So it's not about funding. It's about being able to pay. You got a comment? Yeah, um, it was more so a question. So if um, funding, uh, if you had to rearrange, um, if, if the meal plans cost more than the 225, why not give everyone on, on staff um, 450? You know, that, that kind of doesn't make any sense um, in the sense that, you know, people were expecting to get paid and then the meal plans cost more, right? And so it'll, logically, that'll make sense to, mm -hmm. hey, here's your pay. That's not something anybody ever brought up. So, interesting. Any, yeah. Anything further on I, that? I think that, I don't know when, when I'd have to look at it, but when you, it's all said and done, like 450 in meal do dining dollars, I, I assume no, you No, actually, um, like uh, as a check. Oh, like a pay. but remember, we, could, we can't do that anymore. It was, the classification was taken away. We can't, we can't uh, pay the RAs. There's no way to do that through the chancellor's office. Except for some of the things that they were, the other campuses were talking about, like creating desk hours, that kind of thing. Well, this will definitely be a story to follow. Thank you both for being here. Sure. Unfortunately, you. we are out of time. Um, thanks for joining us this week on On Point. And once again, I want to thank my guests, Al Wayne Spencer and mm -hmm. Melissa Giles. I'm Daniel Martindale. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education, what are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? I found them at work, on a desk, laying out in the open. Copied them, shared them on a website. Now I'm facing up to three years in jail. It's scary. Who knows where it's going? I mean, who's going to hire me? Don't do it. It's not worth it. Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on social media at CSUN On Point. You can hear us on KCSN 88.5 FM on Sunday mornings at 5.30. You can watch us on Santa Clarita Valley Television on Sundays at 5 and LA 36 at 8.30 on Thursday evenings. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Sammy Shakta.